All right, kiddos, we're back. Uh, we've just been converting um, using dimensional analysis within the metric system. We're now going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to go from the English system into the metric system also using dimensional analysis. So this is some great dimensional analysis practice for you. So we'll start today by doing this problem. Kevin Durant, a famous basketball player, he turns out to be six feet nine inches tall. That's his, his height to the nearest inch. And I'd like to convert that to meters. So if I talk to my friend in Europe, I could give him Kevin Durant's height than meters, and he'd have an idea, a better idea as to how tall he is. It would make more sense to him. So what makes this problem more difficult? Well, the difficulty is I have no idea what the conversion factor is to get me from feet and inches into meters. If this were kilometers to meters, it wouldn't be a big deal because I know that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. I know the conversion factor, but I don't know the conversion factor to get me from this English unit into this metric unit. So, on the top of the next page, I have some useful conversion factors for us. Uh, to three significant figures, it turns out that there are 2.54 centimeters and an inch. To three significant figures, there are 454 grams and a pound. And to three significant figures, there are 946 cubic centimeters and a quart. Now remember, I could have also said 946 milliliters in a quart, because a milliliter and a cubic centimeter are the same thing. So we're going to start by converting Kevin Durant's height into inches. Remember, he was six feet nine inches tall. So if I want to get that all into inches, let's see, uh, six feet, this will be a nice little uh, easy conversion factor. We'll go from feet to inches. Aren't there 12 inches in a foot? So six times 12, six times 12 gives me 72 inches plus nine more inches. So he would be 81 inches tall. Okay, now that's helpful because now I can use this conversion factor. See, I know the conversion factor for inches into the metric unit centimeter. And then once I know centimeters, I can easily hop into, I hope, meters. So let's complete the problem. We have 81 inches. We're going to multiply by a conversion factor. Think about what unit goes on the bottom. That's right, inches, so I can divide out of it, and I want to hop into centimeters. So I'm going to use this conversion factor. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. Okay, now I'm not done, because all I've done is I've gone from inches to centimeters. I'd know Kevin Durant's height in centimeters right now, but I'd like it in meters. So we're going to add a step here, we're going to multiply by another conversion factor. This time, let's hop out of centimeters and get into meters. Now remember, centi means hundredth. So centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. Well, how many centimeters then are in a meter? That's right. There would be 100 centimeters in a meter. So centimeters divide out, and I will now know Kevin Durant's height in meters. So let's pull out our calculator, kiddos. And we have 81 inches, and we're going to multiply by 2.54, it's on top, and we're going to divide by 100 because that's on the bottom, and my calculator says 2.0574. Well, let's see, we have an infinite number of sig figs here because that's a definition three significant figures here, and only two in the measurement that I gave you. Remember, we only know his height to the nearest inch. So we have to round this answer off to two significant figures. So 2.057 would round off to 2.1 meters tall. Okay? Now, please notice how I always show units in my setups. You need to do the same. Please show your units. Remember, the unit that you want to get out of always need to be, needs to be on the opposite side, either the top or the bottom, in the next step. So if I'm in centimeters and I want to get out of centimeters, notice I put that unit on the bottom. And then the unit I want to get into would be on the top. Okay, that way centimeters would divide out and I would be in inches. Okay? Alright, always make sure your answer makes sense. 
For instance, it's not uncommon for a student to end up with an answer of 20,574 meters. Does that sound like a reasonable height for a basketball player? Keep in mind, Mount Everest is only 8,850 meters tall. How would a student have got 2,000 or 20,574 meters? Yeah, he would have switched this conver conversion factor around. He would have tried to say there are 100 meters in a centimeter. And of course, that does not make sense. So when you're done, step back and make sure your answer makes sense. We all know about how long a meter is. And it makes sense that Kevin Durant is a little more than two meters tall. All right, let's try another one. Let's complete the following conversions. Remember to round your answers to the proper number of significant figures. So I look this up. Kevin Durant weighs 240 pounds. So I know that weight to two significant figures, and I would like to convert that into kilograms. So let's see if we know a conversion factor here. Let's see, we can go from pounds to grams. And once we go from pounds to grams, we should be able to get into kilograms, shouldn't we? Yep, so this is the conversion factor I'm going to use next. Okay, so we're going to start with what I gave you, 240 pounds. Now, the abbreviation for pounds is LBS. Not quite sure why, it just is. So I'm going to put that on the bottom so I can divide out of it, and I want to hop into grams. So my conversion factor says one pound is 454 grams, so one pound is 454 grams. So I've gotten out of pounds and I've hopped into grams now. Now I want kilograms, kiddos, so there's one more step here. Let's put grams on the bottom and kilograms on top. Do you remember what the prefix kilo means? That's right, it means a thousand. So that means a kilogram is a thousand grams. A kilogram is a thousand grams. That's my conversion factor. So now grams are gone and I will have my answer uh, in kilograms. So let's see what that turns out to be. Okay, 240. Oh, sorry, I did 0.240. So 240. Uh, we're going to multiply by 454 and then we are going to divide by a thousand. So let's see, we get 108.96 kilograms. So I'm just going to write that up here, 108.96. Now let's see, how many sig figs do we have? This is a definition, so it is an infinite number of sig figs. This has three sig figs. This guy, remember, only has two significant figures. You remember that zero right there is a placeholder. So we could write that as 2.4 times 10 to the second, so it only has two sig figs. So I have to round this off to two sig figs. So I'm going to count over two from the left. One, two. Make a decision right there. Should I leave that as 100, or how about 110? Yeah, 110 is two significant figures, and that's that number rounded off to two sig figs. So Kevin Durant, his mass is about 110 kilograms, and he's 2.1 meters tall. All right, let's try another one. Let's convert one gallon into liters. Now once again, make sure your answer makes sense. You all know what a two liter bottle of soda pop looks like, don't you? So if I have a gallon, you all know what a gallon of milk is, we should have a reasonable number of liters maybe in our mind's eye right now as to how many liters can fit into a gallon. So let's see what conversion factor we're going to use first. Well, we know this one. This goes from quarts to cubic centimeters or quarts to milliliters. I think I can use that. So let's first get out of gallons. And I need to get into quarts. So let's think about this for a minute. I wonder why they call a quart a quart. <laughs> yeah, because it's a quarter of a gallon. So if a quart is a quarter of a gallon, doesn't one gallon have four quarts in it? Yeah, that's a conversion factor. I've just gone from gallons to quarts. Now I want to find liters, kiddos. So I want to get out of quarts, and I want to get into milliliters here. Now I know that conversion factor. Remember, one quart is 946 cubic centimeters, and a cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. So one quart is 946 milliliters. One quart 
is 946 milliliters. So now I have my answer in milliliters. Almost done. I want my final answer in liters. So I'm going to put milliliters on the bottom and liters on top. Now, do you remember what milli means? That's right. Milli is a thousandth. So how many milliliters would there be in a liter? Well, let me see. If a milliliter is a thousandth, wouldn't I need a thousand milliliters in a liter? Yeah, I would. So milliliters divide out, and I'll have my answer in liters. So let's plug and chug and see what we get. We have one gallon times four times 946 divided by a thousand. So I end up with 3.784. So my calculator says 3.784. Now that's too many sig figs. This is a definition, so it has infinite. This has three sig figs. This is a definition, so there's infinite. This guy only has two sig figs. So I have to round 3.784 to two sig figs. How does 3.8 liters sound? Does that sound reasonable? Are there about four, close to four liters in a gallon? Yeah that makes sense. So I think my setup is correct. All right. All right, let's do one more. This is a long one, as you can tell. So I think if you guys can follow me on this one, you can do just about any that I'll give to you. Okay. Now there are a few conversion factors that I want to give to you, I guess, before I start, just in case you don't know them. I'm going to tell you that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. All right, you may not know that. I'm going to go ahead and give that to you right off the bat. We're going to need to know that in this problem. Okay? All right, so here we go. Um, the average velocity of an oxygen molecule at room temperature is 4.0 times 10 to the fourth centimeters a second, so about 40,000 centimeters every second. I want to find this velocity in a unit that I can understand, miles per hour. I know miles per hour pretty well. So I wonder how fast that oxygen molecule is traveling in miles per hour. Now this problem is going to require two conversions. One, in my numerator, I have to take centimeters and get it into miles. Okay, centimeters eventually into miles. The other is in my denominator. I have to go seconds into hours. So seconds will have to get into hours. So I have to mess with both of those units. So we're going to use one, two, three, four, five steps and five conversion factors. So first let's work on my numerator. I want to get centimeters into miles. So let's first begin by doing centimeters to inches. Remember that conversion factor up here? 2.54 centimeters in an inch? Well, I'm going to use it again. 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So centimeters are gone, and if I were to stop my calculation right now, I'd have inches traveled every second. I don't want that. I want miles per hour. So I want to hop out of inches and into feet. And we should know this conversion factor. Aren't there 12 inches in a foot? So inches are gone. And if I were to stop my calculation right here, I would know the velocity in feet per second. I don't want feet per second. I want miles per hour. So let's get out of feet and into miles, and that's where I'm going to use this conversion factor. One mile is 5,280 feet. So feet are now gone, and I have miles in my numerator. That's what I'm after, remember? I still have seconds in my denominator, so if I were to stop the math right here, I'd have miles per second. So let's hop out of seconds and get into hours. So seconds start out on the bottom. So do you notice I put that unit on top? So they're opposite each other, so they divide out. And let's hop into minutes first. I know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. So now seconds divide out, and I'm in miles per minute. And then finally, let's hop out of minutes. Once again, they have to be opposite each other and get into hours. Aren't there 60 minutes in an hour? So minutes are gone. And now my denominator is in hours. My numerator is miles, my denominator is hours. That's exactly what I want. So I have a whole bunch of math to do here. So let's pull out our calculator and let's go for it, okay? So we're going to start with 
4 second e e to the fourth, that's 4 times 10 to the fourth, divided by 2.54, divided by 12, and then we're going to divide by 5,280. It's on the bottom, so I divide by it, kiddos. And then I'm going to multiply by 60, and multiply by 60 again. Notice I haven't pressed enter yet. I'll press enter right now, then I'm done. So my calculator says 894.7745, yada, yada, yada. All those numbers. How many sig figs am I allowed? Well, that's a definition. That is infinite. That's a definition. That's a definition. That's a definition. This has three sig figs. And this guy here only has two sig figs. So I have to round this off to the second digit. So 894.7745 rounds off to 890 miles per hour. Ah, that's moving pretty darn fast, isn't it? Almost 900 miles per hour. That's how quickly or how fast an oxygen molecule travels at room temperature. Okay? All right, kiddos, hope this helped out. Uh, we'll probably do another practice video or two. Um, some kids really struggle with dimensional analysis, and I'm here to help you. We're going to get through this. The math that we're doing here is really about as hard as it gets all year. And notice, we're only multiplying or dividing. That's it. So try not to make this any harder than it is. Stick with me, and we'll pull through. Okay? All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.